And welcome back to the special Hannity. And joining me now are some of the Democrat and independent voters featured in the movie The Hope and the Change. Now, they voted for Barack Obama in 2008, but he cannot count on their vote come November. They're here to explain why. Welcome, all of you. Thanks. You're all big movie stars now. Please. Uh, thanks for being with us. Let's talk about where you were then, where you are now. What happened? Because the movie just shows all this excitement and everyone caught up in the moment. What happened? Well, in the beginning, in 2008 at least, I, I was caught up in the moment too. I had that hope, that dream, that wow, look at this guy, you know, this is going to make things better. This guy's going to make changes that we all need. We're going to see our, our GDP go up. We're going to see jobs. We're going to see things made in America. It just, it, it was a lot of bliss, at least it seemed it would be. And you're a small business owner? I am. Okay. And how was your business for, uh, from four years ago? It, it certainly hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Um, there are moments when I think things are going great, but right now it's in a slump. Gerald, you, you really, um, I listen to your comments, watch your comments a lot during the film, mm -hmm. expressing a lot of disappointment. Yes. Tell me how you were then versus how you are today. Well, back then, I think there was a lot of excitement, excitement uh, based on uh, a lot of things that were going on. I mean, he was a very uh, charismatic individual um, that we were excited about. And uh, as someone who's always voted, uh, straight party line uh, voting. I've never had to really deal with certain issues, if you will, um, as a part of my decision for who I choose to vote for. Um, but over the past four years, um, I'm, I'm a ordained minister. Yes, sir. And because of that, uh, the past four years have been kind of a, a trying one for me because I've been asked basically uh, to try to accept some things that I fundamentally uh, cannot uh, accept. So, Is, it, would one of them be the contraceptive mandate in, in the Obamacare bill? Just curious, based on the fact that you're a minister. Uh, well, that that's part of it, but it's really the same-sex marriage issue. You know what stood out at me, Amy? Let me ask you this. Um, you know, he's going to unite the country. Everybody's excited, and I look at how he's running this campaign. Are you following this campaign closely? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course, absolutely. It's important. <laughs> well, I think important. it's important. Yeah. Um, but do you see the, the change in tone? In other words, it's so divisive. He can't run on his record. He's, he's, not, you know, he's not the unknown quantity he was, was reading from a teleprompter. Is that very discernible for you? Uh, it's very clear, absolutely. Um, uh, gosh, it, it's, so, it's so transparent, the non-transparency that there's been. It's so clear now. Um, that he's not capable or, or able to do the things that he said he was going to do now. Um, you can see it in the ads that he runs for his campaign. It's, it's, there's no basis. There's no uh, looking at the issues. It's yeah. attacking well, personally. Yeah, well, Romney, apparently, we didn't know it caused a woman to get cancer. And he's a felon. And he's a tax cheat. And by the way, he wants dirty air and water for our children. I mean, that's what it, it's now been reduced to. Right. Chad, you, were, you are a construction worker. Yes. I don't know to the extent you know my background, but that was my background for many, many years. I uh, worked every area of construction. Uh, I have many friends in the construction business. Most of them are hurting. Most of them are struggling to, to, to keep, you know, afloat right now. Are you experiencing the same thing? Still experiencing the same thing, even after the four years, doing very well in the business, having the housing market crash, having to get out of the building part of construction that I was in, start over from the bottom in an AV installation industry, which is a small business, has also floundered over the last four years, barely managed to stay afloat and have not seen anything turn back around as to we're going to build more houses, the whole we'll put the country what back on What happened to all that, that stimulus track. money? When, when you hear that stimulus money went to, let's see, uh, Brazil and a car company in Finland and Canada and Mexico and Solyndra and Sun Power, and that these were guys, big bundlers for Obama, they got all this money, we, did you get bailed out? Does that, does that anger you? No, I hope the car company in Finland's doing better, though, because the rest of us over here with, aren't. So. With, the, with American tax dollars, with you want American them to do tax well? Dollars? No, I don't want them to do well. <laughs> I want him to stimulize this country with the money. Yeah. I want him to keep it here, mm -hmm. make us what we were. How many of you think, just as a show of hands, if I may, um, and we're going to get you guys in the back row, I promise. How many of you think that the president really believed redistribution was the answer and that he tried it, gave us $5 trillion in debt, and how many of you think that that economic philosophy 
is a failure. I do. You do. You believe it would still work now? No, it's not that I, I didn't raise my hand because I, I think it still works. I'm not, I don't think he knows where to go right now. Mm. I think that he, you know, got everybody excited. Everybody was hopeful. And now we're starting to realize that it's not. The, the, the change that, that he promised didn't come. What else does he have to, to, to promise? I, I think he's now trying to um, get excited in other ways. Like he's going out with the celebrities. He's becoming a man's I think he enjoys man. It. He's, yeah. you know, trying to be laid back. That's not where we're at. That's a really good point, and we're going to pick, on, pick up on that when we come back. And thank you all for being here. But you're all movie stars, and, uh, you know, we can, you know, George Clooney, watch out. Because... You know, he said, President Obama said about George Bush in July of 2008, that George Bush took a credit card to the Bank of China in the name of our kids, and he rang up, you know, $4 trillion in debt is now $9 trillion. That's irresponsible. That's unpatriotic. $4 trillion eight years. We already have five trillion going on six with Obama in under four years. What does that tell you about money? Um, well, it tells us that they're printing money, but I think that gets back to the heart of the spending issue. Spending money. Is, uh, yeah, it's spending money. Um, that, that's where I messed up when I was looking at this election, is he said all the right things, but I never asked, and he never said how he was going to do it. And I think he realized when he got in, he didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Good point. Michael? I, I just believe he screwed us over and he gave us hope, but the change came for him and his family, not for the average American person. Yeah. One of the things, I want to ask all of you this, this general question that I have. Um, I'm a conservative. I, most of you know that. Um, I tried to vet the president in 2008. And I went back and I looked at 20 years in Jeremiah Wright's church. I interviewed Jeremiah Wright. That was the last interview he did in that election cycle in March of 2007. I looked at his relationship with Bill Ayers. Uh, he started his political career in the home of an unrepentant terrorist who was part of a group that bombed the Pen Pentagon, the Capitol, and New York City Police Headquarters. Throughout the course of that campaign, he was asked one question about Bill Ayers. Gave speeches with him, sat on boards with him, and he said he's just some guy in the neighborhood. Do you think his policies represent some of his radical background? Do you think he's more radical than you thought? H yes, hands up. Anybody? Yes. yes? Yes? No? No. Would you hang out in Jeremiah Wright's church for 20 years? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, that's that part, no. I would, would you not give have. a speech with an unrepentant terrorist that was part of a group called the Weather Underground? Well, I guess what I should clarify my no is that... All right, I'm being really mean. I'm, I'm no, just, no, no, I'm just no. asking a serious no, no. question. Ask right. the question. And, yeah. and the truth yeah. is, is that if you, I don't know the uh, things that you're speaking on, then I, I can't have an opinion on it. But what I do believe is that uh, my opinions that I do have of Obama are based on the fact of what he has promised and what we actually got. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say a whole lot about whether or not his policies are a failure because I think he missed an opportunity. Um, yeah. He had the ability to execute and he spent most of his first year at least trying to get everybody to agree. So this is more about results for you. Uh, well, it's 100% it's about results. Yeah. So, so do you think vetting a president, though, on these important issues, I just think it told us a lot about him. And I was widely criticized. Mm -hmm. The president mentioned me as a, on the campaign trail at least 10, 12 times mm -hmm. in 2007 and 8. He doesn't really like me. But I, but I saw that he surrounded himself with radical people. Does that, do your friends tell you about, anybody, any opinions on this? Do your friends tell you about what you might have expected? Do you wish you vetted him, in other words? Maybe that's the question I'm trying to get to. Yes. Uh, and you I, wish you did. a lot of things. You've you got to understand, when you have been raised um, in a de democratic home, um, and you've been basically taught to just straight party ticket, there's an option when you yeah. vote, you can just check that box and then everything down, and you're not even given the opportunity to really think for yourself. I like your intellectual honesty. What do you think? Do, do you think you know more about him now? And maybe, maybe we just didn't pay attention to these things? 
Yeah, I definitely feel I know more about him now. I think before it was a lot of, you know, shining lights and, and snapshots and smiles and all that stuff that, you know, drew many voters to him. And I'm an independent, so I didn't exactly grow up in, and the household I grew up in, you know, a father that was Republican, a mother that was Democrat. So they basically went to the polls and canceled each other out. Yeah. You know, so for me, it was, that's why I became an independent. I said, well, I want to, you know, I don't want to vote by party. I want to vote by candidate and see what they, you know, what they bring to the table. There's a good and bad on both sides. Yeah. No, I think anyone else on, on this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm an independent, and I, I almost always vote conservative, Republican, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I didn't because I was frustrated. And I think that's why I didn't vet him the way I normally would have. He, yeah. he said everything. By the way, I, I was frustrated with conservatives at the time. I thought they spent too much money. But the biggest deficit George Bush had was $450 billion. We have not had a, a deficit under Obama under a trillion. But that seemed big then. Right? Yeah, we didn't did. know what was coming. No, I agree with you. And yeah, I don't think he was actually, if I'm being honest, any more radical to me then than he is now. And I'll tell you why. Because earlier on, with the lights and the pictures and the hope and the the charisma and the dreams, you were blinded. And yeah. now the curtains are open. We see the man still behind blinded. the curtain. You see, yeah. I viewed it as I called it Obama mania. Like people were in a trance. Yes, we can. Obama, change, change, change. <laughs> and I'm not blaming people. I think it's easy to get caught up in the moment. If you go to a concert, right, you get caught up in yeah. in the music mm -hmm. of the of the moment. You know, let me throw out these numbers. One in six of our fellow Americans now live in poverty. Fifteen million more Americans are on food stamps since Barack Obama became president. Twenty-five million Americans un- and underemployed. Over a hundred golf outings, Nantucket, Hawaii, basketball, concerts. What do you all think? Yeah. I think it's, it's good to be the rock star president, right? You can, you can kind of do what you want. Um, out of touch? Very out of touch. And I think the man has a right to take the occasional vacation, but when you have 20% of your country struggling to keep their heads, you know, to feed themselves, if you're taking your vacations, I don't think you invite the press and make it public. Bad. bad. It's real bad. I you're out of work right now. You live in Pittsburgh? Yes. Yeah. I wish I had the money he spends on vacations. Just the money for one vacation would put me and my family on a real nice vacation. How long? Because I was just in Pittsburgh interviewing Paul Ryan. You know, how long have you been out of work now? Since last Thanksgiving. Wow. So you're on employment? I, I'm on uh, disability. You're on disability. Yeah. Okay. You know, for me, it's not the vacation. He's a hardworking man. Mm -hmm. He deserves a vacation. For me, it's more he's out of touch. He's out of touch with what all of us, the middle class, have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I had a conversation with a friend of mine before I came here, and she said to me, thank you for being our voice. You have an opportunity to talk for us. Maybe somebody will listen. And that's all I want, is somebody to listen. We, you know, we complain, we, he's always doing the things that he wants to do, being able to, to uh, go out with, you know, the, the movie stars, get into that whole rock thing. You know, we, we the middle class, would just like to live a nice life. Let our children see a nice life. My, like, the thing that upsets me is that hope. The hope was for my kids. My daughter is losing her house because what she bought it for and what she's trying to sell it for is like half. Scary. It is very it's scary. scary. These are scary times. What I'm afraid of is we'll become Greece. 24% unemployment right now. <laughs> Average American in three years has lost 39% of their saved wealth. Average home price across the country is down nearly 40%. Reaction. And then compare it to the vacations, the lifestyle. Um, what he probably spent for his family on airfare to get ho to Hawaii could probably pay my bills for a few months. To know that I'm spending 40 cents off of every dollar I earn. for a couple of years. I know the price of an hour in Air Force One. <laughs> Did you know his, the, him and his wife flew separately to Nantucket? They couldn't coordinate their schedules and flew back separately. That means twice the cost. I think it's so sad and mind-boggling that the very things that he thinks are keeping him in touch with all of us are the very things that are pushing him further away and making him seem so much more distant and not in touch with what's really going on with the world, with, with the country. Mm -hmm. Look, we're out of, town, uh, out of time. Um, thank you all. I think your message, ma'am, is heard loud and clear. And I wish your daughter and all of you, I hope you get working soon. Good luck in your business. And thank you all for being here and telling your story. Appreciate it. Keep us in your prayers, Minister. Yes, sir.